very good evening and thank you so much for joining in uh, i understand a lot of commitments a lot of uh, schedules were there but still you made it for the ideas thank you so much for that and a very good evening ladies and gentlemen respected faculties valued students and honored guests welcome to the latest episode of gibs iri talk series conducted by gibs business school bangalore i am professor sandeep bansali from the team gibs bangalore and it's my privilege to host today's iri talks so before we begin let me introduce you all to gibs gibs business school bangalore is managed by goel educational trust is a prestigious institution located in bangalore it offers aict approved pgdm program and bba from bangalore university providing students with a comprehensive education the gibs business school boosts an exceptional faculty known for their mentorship and focus on practical learning gibs is committed to preparing students for industry through programs such as gibs ire school gibs finishing school which enhances the skills and as well as the knowledge Additionally, GIBS has a remarkable track record of placing its students in the top-notch organization, ensuring the bright future. At GIBS, we strive to cultivate an environment that fosters innovation, research, and entrepreneurship. Our mission is to empower the individuals to reach to their full potential, both personally as well as professionally. We aim to develop the strong leadership skills, facilitating valuable networking opportunities, and provide active engagement with our community. This month is very very special for all of us as a woman who walks in purpose does does not have to chase people or opportunities her light causes people and opportunities to pursue her on this november 19th the, we mark the world women's entrepreneurship day here at the iri talks we believe why not to celebrate something so special to celebrate or uh, to celebrate all this women entrepreneurs we declare the november's theme for iri talks as women entrepreneurs week so now we are here by inviting our first women entrepreneur for this gibs iri talks ms githika anand gupta thank you so much once again githika ma'am for joining us and she's a co-founder and chief pilot of mop food private limited known for her appearance on shark tank and today's topic is on tips to be a successful entrepreneur so ladies and gentlemen let me introduce you all to ms githika i must say uh, she does not need an introduction but as a part of our procedure we'll have to do it is not less than a celebrity and i'm sure uh, most of us would have uh, watched mom on shark tank india but ms githika anand is a trail blazing marketing and a branding professional with an illustrious career spanning over two decades holding prestigious mba gold medal from amity university amity business school and numerous scholarship she exemplifies the perfect blend of beauty with the brains Ms. Githika's global experience has led a remarkable success, including the launch of iconic products and brands such as Sony's Bravia range, HTC smartphone, and her co-founding of the popular beer brand Dunkin. As a dynamic entrepreneur, Ms. Githika has ventured into the F&B industry, partnering partnering with various companies and establishing herself as a leader in the field. Her recent venture, Mad Over Parathas and Pakoras. is a testament to her commitment of delivering indian food with an unmatched hygiene and quality packed and maintained with a freshness as well as the taste ms githika's accolades including the 2022 women entrepreneurship award um, entrepreneurship of the year award and her extensive involvement in csr and social causes underscore her status as a remarkable professional with a heart of gold her relentlessly pursuit of excellence is everything she undertakes immense as an influential Uh, identity in the industry and a true inspiration for all ma'am before i hand it over to you uh, dear audience in case if you have any questions any doubts anything would you would love to know from ms githika probably you can just put it in the q and a section we will take it at the end of the session ma'am over to you first of all thank you so much sandeep this is a lovely introduction and i'm really really you know flattered with so many kind words i must say that you are kind so you are finding everybody else very kind So hi guys good evening my name is Geetika and I'm really looking forward to interact with you and have a lovely one hour session I think the time will just fly because I have so much to talk to so I think before wasting any further time let's start So I would like to share my screen and just let me know that if my screen is visible So is my screen visible Mr Sandeep Perfectly fine ma'am 
perfect so hi guys today's topic is tips to be a successful entrepreneur so i don't know what is successful or what is not successful it is all in your mind and it is all in your brain i know money also matters but being successful is whatever objective or whatever vision you have created and once you achieve that that is being successful so first of all it is very important to understand the word successful sometimes we just say uh, if you get a lot of money you are successful but that's not true maybe if your product is successful you are successful but that may not be also true so it is a combination of what you want and what you desire and what is your vision that creates you to be successful so a successful a business venture for me may be different and a successful business venture for mr sandeep will be different so we should all first of all clarify our own vision our own mindset that what do we want so let's start i think i don't have to talk about myself so it is already we can skip this slide because you already know me okay so when we talk about entrepreneurs so again first we should let's clarify all the meanings so first we clarify what is being successful and now let's clarify what is an entrepreneur so somebody says sometimes oh when you become your own boss and you have you know 50 people and you're the boss you're the owner that is entrepreneurship so i'm i'm really sorry that is not true when you do everything so so i come from a corporate background so i'll try to if you don't mind i'll try to link few things with my own self because for me i am successful with my own definition so i will try to link certain things as live example so that you can learn from what i have done or what i have achieved and how i have done it so when i was in the corporate life of course i had a pa i had a very fancy and flamboyant kind of a office and the team uh, and i was the boss but when i was the boss uh, i was doing only one thing in my job so suppose i was doing marketing i was handling only marketing but when you become an entrepreneur you have to know or have knowledge or you take care of the entire organization so i will be covering up in the future slides that what um, whether it's hr whether it's finance whether it is um, marketing whether it is branding whether it is sales all three are different by the way so you will be managing everything on your own in the beginning so you should think from your mind that when you start your own venture you're not the owner of the business or the boss of the business so that you think oh everything else the team will do and i just have to sit in an air conditioned office that is not that is not being an entrepreneur an entrepreneur is a person who goes out and chases his dreams or her dreams and so for example in the fnb industry i am the waitress also i am the server also i am the manager also i am the cashier also and the do i have everybody but i am everybody also i am the chef also and i am the customer also so being an entrepreneur is taking ownership of your business taking responsibility and not only point out to the team that do this and do that otherwise you will never be able to empathize that what they are doing what should be the time taken to pack one paratha box and i can sit in my office and say oh please pack one paratha box in 30 seconds but when i try to do it myself i myself take 2 minutes so we should give them aims we should give them objectives which are realistic so your vision has to be very clear your mindset has to be very clear you should be ready to do anything and everything because it is your own baby it is your own business it is not somebody else's baby so like you change the diaper of your own child without thinking twice so you should be able to do anything in your business without thinking twice so this is the first most important definition of being an entrepreneur then what is an entrepreneur so an entrepreneur is a person who finds a real problem creates a solution to that real problem so finding a solution to a real problem is being an entrepreneur so it is not that oh i think let's do this so let's do this it's it's never like that so first you should find a problem 
and then you should find a solution to that problem and then only that that can become a business idea so now once you have the business idea we have i have few things your business idea should be close to your interest or your passion or your skill so for example if i do not like food get into the food business it does not make sense if i like so i am very passionate of food actually my nickname in my friend circle is the foodaholic so i love food and i always wanted to be in the fnb industry so i actually chose this field myself because my passion lies in it i love so kehte hai na ki so i i give certain hindi examples mujhe khana khilane pilane mein maza aata hai so when i you know feed people i enjoy it and and then in the fnb business everybody else is enjoying we are working so for example it's diwali right now everybody else is having their holidays and i am working on diwali day also we serve customers we have parties we have caterings on new years everybody is partying we are working on christmas everybody is enjoying we are working on holy everybody has a holiday we are working so but i enjoy that it gives me a different kick and satisfaction of feeding people so it's a different issue we charge people to after feeding them so so you should align your interest your skills your passion along with that problem then you will love your business then nobody has to motivate you to get up in the morning and go to work you yourself will get up because you are doing something which you like you are doing something where it is your interest you are doing something where your skill is there so please align your interest and skills then okay so i wanted to open a parathas and pakoras or, or anything in the food actually not parathas and pakoras i wanted to enter the food fnb market then do a detailed market research so when i did a detailed market research i realized so i'm just trying to link with examples because otherwise it will be too theoretical you can get that information on in the internet also so i did a market research that there was a not there was not even a single player of parathas and pakoras serving at your doorstep in a hygienic manner either they were parathas for 40 rupees on the road side or for 500 rupees in a fancy restaurant so why is so i found a problem so that is the problem that why is there no player in the market serving this so the problem was parathas and pakoras were perceived to be non delivery friendly product they they get oily they get soggy they get very patchy and they are not a delivery friendly product so i i found the problem so i mean see so this these points you can get from the presentation i'm linking them to real life because between listening to me and listening to somebody else should be so when i did the market research i found the real problem and then i worked on a solution so the solution was our parathas remain fresh our pakoras do not get soggy do not get oily and they remain crispy on delivery so i found the solution so a unique product so you should have a unique value proposition for the consumer of your product which nobody else is providing or even if somebody else is providing you should have added some value to your product which will differentiate you from the others so that is creating a value proposition doing the market research then understanding the demand so i then did some invested some time money and energy understanding the market size and when i realized that the market size is 35000 uh more than 35000 crores and i was like okay if my vision is this much this is just a part of the whole pie even if competition comes i if i achieve my target it is just a small part of the whole market size so you have to understand your target market you have to understand who all are your competitors who are not your competitors if competitor comes what happens then you do a feasibility check that that then i you know created some products i went out i got feedback i made people try it i remember it took us 9 months like you take 9 months to deliver a baby so i took 9 months to launch my brand so it is a joke in the company that the baby is born after 9 months so we created the product we took we 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 took 9 months to do this all these points market research accessing the demand 
understanding your target market. If competition comes, what is going to happen? The feasibility check and the feedback. I used to put the paratha and, and have it after 45 minutes because it will reach the customer after 45 minutes. I used to make the paratha then pack it and eat it the next day. That for how many hours it will remain fresh. So you do the feasibility check. You make people try it. You get the feedback. That will enhance your product. So you take feedback, then you work on it. Then you take feedback, then you work on it. And you rework on it till you get a perfect solution to the problem. So this is identifying the viability of a business idea. When you do this, this will increase your chances of success because you have already taken the feedback of what is not good. So when you know what is not good and you rework on it and then redo the whole thing, so rather than wasting money, in the end, when you launched your product or brand, it is better to do this homework beforehand, which will increase your chances of success and reduce the chances of failure. Okay, then a detailed business plan. Now, if suddenly I think, okay, let's make paratas and pakoras, it doesn't happen like that. You have to, so my business plan is actually 70 pages. So you must create a detailed business plan. The importance of creating a business plan should not be underestimated. It should be with a vision, with a mission, with a SWOT. SWOT is you should have your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You should know how to make a SWOT. It should have your financial projections that, okay, next five years, what sales do I need to achieve? In how many years will I break even? In how many years will I make profits? Or in how many months will I make profits? In how many months will I break even? What are my funding requirements? Do I have, if I don't make money, how long can my business survive without funding? What is the stage when I want funding? What will be my business valuation? How will I create that valuation? What will be my marketing plan? What will be my financial plan? All these things, trust me, has to be written down. So again, if you do not do this, you can launch a product, you can become an entrepreneur. But if you do this, you know what you're going towards. You know how, and it is a business plan is a live document. Even today, I use my business plan, which I created years ago, because every month I review it. Every month we change the figures. Every month we update. Every month we review our business plan. So it's a live document. This will go along with you throughout you know, your business model, throughout your business plan. So guys, do not underestimate people do not want to work hard and do not want to create a business plan, don't do this mistake because your business plan will tell you whether you should launch and become an entrepreneur or not. Because your business plan will tell you, can you make money or not? Your business plan will tell you, can your product be successful or not? Your business plan will tell you where you will go after three to five years. So please this is one of the most important things I would like to say that build a detailed business plan. And as I said, my business plan is of 70 pages. Okay. Now, um, you know, my mom used to say, Ek chai ki dukaan bhi akele nahi chal sakti, which is so true. You can't do everything on your own, though you will bootstrap, though you will have less of funds, but you should need a team. And hiring the right team is extremely important. Just don't hire people because you want to hire people. Hire the right people. Hire the people who will share your vision with you, who will understand your vision. If suppose, you know, I get a customer complaint and I get very, very upset about oh, why did this customer complain? If my staff does not understand the importance of customer complaints, then there is no point because I cannot be everywhere 24 hours. So my staff has to understand that customer complaints should not be there or what is the importance of customer complaints. So, so you should hire the people who can share your vision, who can understand your vision, who can respect your vision. So for that, you should write a clear job description. You should not only use portals and or, or LinkedIn, but you should also do the hiring using some referral and network uh, using your network because when you hire people whom you know or your network knows the chances of trusting them is higher and then you can build that trust build that relationship so that they become part of your organization so and 
so for example uh, if somebody is an mba you can't make him a chef and if somebody has done a cooking course you can't tell him to do become a cashier so hiring the right person for the right position having a detailed job description understanding what are the deliverables what should be the compensation and what is the expectations of the company should be made very clear to your team because this will help you achieve your objective again much better than you know anyone else now i am not sure how many of you know an esop plan which is the employee stock options plan which is esops are offered to employees so for example i am 100% owner of my business but i have actually allocated 10 per 10% of my shares to my employees so that if i because i'm a bootstrap startup in 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 the startup industry or being an entrepreneur you can't pay hefty salaries so you go and tell your finance manager okay i will give you certain esops once the company valuation increases once the company makes profits then your share in the company will also increase and you will also get more money year by year once the valuation of the company increases now what happens in this way the employee becomes a part of the management an employee becomes a part of the team and his objective becomes the same as your objective he follows the same objective which is profitability because he knows if the company will grow his money his shares will also grow so today if the my share uh, you know when i started the value of my share for example was 100 rupees and today the value of my share one share is 10000 rupees so you know this is how you create value for your team this is how and and maybe after after five years the value of my one share will be for example 10 lakh rupees so imagine somebody has two shares only the value will be 20 lakhs for him <clears throat> so having an esop plan motivates the employees and helps them achieve your vision together as a team this will increase your business venture success probability then of course we all know that marketing and branding is extremely important jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai these days social media is all what matters your facebook your instagram your linkedin so and and then you can have your make your customers as your brand ambassadors ask them to post videos ask them to post uh, you know reviews uh, you should know who your target audience is you should have a clear marketing strategy clear branding strategy uh, because if you will do the marketing right and balance it with your branding and marketing and sales strategy then your product will build uh, the you know profile of your brand faster and the value of your brand will also grow over a period of time so marketing and branding is extremely important to create that successful business model or a successful entrepreneur for me it's the same thing okay so ab humne business model bana liya we are doing marketing but life is not just a joyful ride there will be challenges there will be issues there will be problems there will be hurdles so you have to hustle you have to hustle and hustle and never be scared of hustling so stay focused on your vision guys don't deviate don't deviate from your vision your vision is clear that i want to do this now if to achieve that vision you have to change your path like for example if you're going from your home to your office and one road is closed what do you do you take another route but you you don't decide that oh i won't go to office today you have to reach your office your boss is there <clears throat> and tell us you become an entrepreneur and become your own boss so but still when it's your own you your own office also you will take a different path so be open to adapt to changes i i will recommend here a book so you can read that book it's called who moved my cheese you know i i keep reading that mo- a book whenever i become too you know stagnant so it is like that you read the book and it will tell you keep navigating keep changing be ready be flexible don't be very rigid so sometimes you have to take another route but this the another route will still take you to your vision to your office right so don't be scared to change the route it may be a longer route it may be a shorter route 
it with more speed breakers. It may be a route with less speed breakers, but it will take you to your office. So it will take you to your vision. So don't don't be scared to adapt to changes. So I'll give you an example. When I launched my brand, I launched a single brand with a single brand strategy. But when COVID hit, I had to um, utilize my resources because the sales went down. So I had the same staff. I had the same kitchen size, same electricity bill, same rent. But I launched more brands from the same kitchen so that my ROI, return on investment, increases from the same place, even though the sales went down. But I grew in COVID. My brands grew in COVID. Our sales grew in COVID. Our number of orders grew in COVID. So it was just because you think and you adapt. You Sometimes it's required to pivot. So I won't call myself pivoting, but still kind of pivot. I move from a single brand strategy to a multi-brand cloud kitchen strategy. I moved from a QSR model to a cloud kitchen model. So I also did some changes in my business model because to navigate the challenge of COVID. So if, if I can change that, we were one of the few brands in the F&B industry who grew in COVID. No, very less brands. In COVID, in fact, food industry was really badly hit. So I can say all thanks to God, Jai Ram, Shukrana Guruji, that we grew and we are growing and we will continue to grow um, in our business by God's kind grace. So, so be open to change, be open to think and rethink and find more solutions. So seek mentorship, take advice. So like I took a lot of mentorship, a lot of advice from the industry experts. So you, uh, you know, there are a lot of platforms for example, uh, this you know I offer mentorship so like that many entrepreneurs, many industry experts, um, you know provide the cohorts available. There are industry events available. There are many places now to seek mentorship and advice. But that mentorship and advice should be from the industry where your product is. So don't try to take mentorship and advice. This is my sincere advice to you from somebody who's not from the industry because then they don't understand. So they will not be able to give you the right solution because there is no answer or a solution that one size fits it all. It's not a free size strategy. It is every industry has different challenges. Every product profile has a different challenge. Please ask the right people. Usually what happens is people take advice from wrong people. That should be avoided. So, because, you know, it is, it does not help. It does not work. In fact, it will not help and it can deteriorate. So, seek mentorship and advice from the right people. Resilience. Resilience is extremely important because when a challenge comes or a hurdle comes, you should hustle rather than get getting demotivated. You should be self-motivated because don't forget, forget when you are an entrepreneur, it's your own baby. Okay, never forget that. It's your own baby. You can't leave your baby. Stay resilient, be focused. Don't forget your vision. Then innovation. Innovation is required. Like I said, I innovated, uh, I, I, you know, a, a different strategy completely together. And from one brand, I launched four brands. So, and, and from one model, I changed my model to a, you know, cloud kitchen model. So, so culture of innovation, experimentation, uh, should be there now i will i will give you an example when designing a paratha box i use a lot of physics i use a lot of chemistry and i use a lot of mathematics so that how much moisture should go out and how much moisture should remain so that the paratha remains fresh uh, we don't call parathas crispy but we say parathas fresh but our pakoras are crispy so there is you know i i study the chemical properties of uh, what soaks in oil, what batter releases oil. So there are a lot of things. So if you foster the culture of innovation, experimentation, risk-taking, limited risk-taking, balanced risk-taking, then you will be able to develop a culture in the company that yes, there is no no. There is no no. Because obviously uh, it is like that anything is possible and everything is possible and who knew that the telephone will be invented? Who knew that the mobile will be invented? Who knew an aeroplane will be there? So please, there is no no 
if somebody makes fun of your business idea don't get demotivated as i said it's your baby it's your be self motivated and what somebody is laughing at at one day will be surprised when you do it at another day on another day so stay up to date attend the uh, industry events um um it's emphasize on experimentation not only yourself give freedom to your staff to experiment because some your brain is not alone there are many other brains in the company and what one staff can think and add to your vision can be sometimes very surprising and miraculous so give your staff give your team freedom to experiment and allow them to make mistakes we are not god the most important thing which i tell to my team even today it is okay to make mistakes but make a mistake understand your mistake accept your mistake don't say this is not my fault oh he did this he did that you know we have that blame game strategy usually in offices don't do that accept your mistake understand your mis- mistakes then work on those mistakes so that you don't repeat them in future so i i use this i i will repeat uh you know it's okay to make mistakes accept your mistakes understand your mistakes and fix them so that you don't have to repeat them in future and most importantly i will say learn from other people's mistake also then you can make less mistakes yourself always always look around there are people making mistakes on a daily basis learn from them we will help you but then of course when you are an entrepreneur you need right suppliers you know need resources you need staff you need so much and so much and you are all alone doing everything so please make good networks make good partnerships that will help you solve your issues very easily so for example when i launched i was like what you know spa uh, system what i use for billing should i use so i called immediately one of my persons in the fnb industry what is the pos to use so he said okay i use possist i use pet puja and immediately i there is a national restaurant association of india group i typed a message guys what pos will you recommend so you know being part of these whatsapp groups in attending these industry events that will help you solve all your questions like in a split of a second but otherwise if i have to do an r and d then what post should i use then what who will do the r and d for my product my time should be used for my product for my vision my time should not be used what post shall i use that everybody has already discovered what post to use let's use their discovery and and make our decisions quicker so having the right network uh access to the right resources reference recommendations collaborations marketing sometimes shared marketing efforts oh i have a paratha you have a drink let's together and get a combo i'll do marketing from my end you do marketing from your end you promote my product with you i'll promote your product with me we both will get exposure let's make a combo let's make a combo with paratha and a cool burger so like that you know collaborations shared marketing efforts increasing credibility all these things will help you achieve or or overcome so many challenges with the blink of an eye which you would find it very difficult if you have to do it on your own okay so very important thing if you want to be a successful entrepreneur please be happy don't be sad if you are happy then you can achieve whatever you want to achieve and whether we accept or we don't accept our happiness is like i get a lot of happiness when i work if i don't work i'm i am not happy but at the same time i love spending time with my son i love spending time with my husband so entrepreneurship does not mean that you can't spend time with your family it's the other way around you more flexible you can actually find the balance in life because if you are a good planner if you organize yourself if you use calendars notes you know these things help you if you think oh i will do this it will never happen so when i have a date with my son i put it in my calendar whether it's once a week whether it's once in 15 days but when that calendar so it's blocked so when that calendar pops in i have no other option but to do that so please uh, you know you know having the right mindfulness everybody has their own way to relax some people 
relax by watching movies. Some people relax by doing meditation. Some people relax by doing yoga. I relax by going to the spa. So everybody has their different roles. So please find what relaxes you. Please find out that thing. Because sometimes we are not aware that what relaxes us. What calms us down. What makes us happy. So for me, even when I spend time with my son, it calms me down. I, I tend to calm myself down if whatever stress I'm going through. So please set boundaries, take out time, put it in the calendar, try to do whatever calms you down, whatever relaxes you. Take breaks, practice mindfulness, which is some meditation, some yoga. And trust me, some people, especially a lot of people, if they're not able to handle their stress, they don't tell other people. Please communicate. Don't be scared. Go to a psychologist if required. Because sometimes people think people who are mad go to a psychologist. No, it's not like that. Go and share your things. Trust me, going to a psychologist is not that you're mad. It's not that you can't go. Find someone whom you can speak to. If it's not a friend or a family member, be it a psychologist. Just, just vomit out your stresses. Trust me, these things help. Because it is normal. For you to be stressed out because you are handling a newborn baby. So, and you should not deviate from your vision. You should not feel demotivated. So, do these things. Take breaks and find the right balance between work and life. And learning. So, for example, I'm here today talking to you for 40 minutes. So, obviously, I've learned something and which I'm sharing with you. So, I, till today, I do courses. I give courses also and I do courses also. I give lectures or I attend lectures also. I do guest speaker sessions. I attend guest speaker sessions. I do both. So, so there is no age that you can say, I know it all. I am perfect. I am God. No. There is no know it all. So life is <clears throat> a continuous learning process. Every day, I try to give myself an objective that <clears throat> what did I learn today? So you meet people, you learn from them. So learn only the good things from good people. And when you see somebody not so good, learn what you don't have to learn. That is also important. Some people forget that to learn what you don't have to learn. It's very important to differentiate the two. So um, I still attend industry conferences. As I said, I'm part of the National Restaurant Association of India. I I read publications, blogs. I take courses. I <clears throat> take trainings. I use so social media. So I do everything on that side of the table also and on this side of the table also. So so every day I tell, I ask myself, what did I learn today? From whom did I learn today? Sometimes we learn from our juniors. Sometimes we learn from team members. Sometimes we learn things from an event so never never think that you know it all because the day you think you know it all it, it may be the end of the day that day so so please have an open mind have an open heart and take as much as as much knowledge as you can and keep learning and relearning okay a bootstrapped approach trust me it is very important because we have limited funds <clears throat> and we have limited bandwidth. So it's very, very important to use every penny after an analysis. What will lead to profitability? What can I, like I said, I had the same kitchen. I had the same staff. So I was trying. So I had an interview after COVID because we grew. We were one of the very few brands in the food industry who grew in COVID. So I had an interview with one of the channels. Uh, it was a radio channel. So I, he said, what is your mantra? I said, my mantra is do more with less. So I started doing more <clears throat> with less resources, with lesser things. And that's how the ROI goes higher. So, but it should not be, you know, penny wise, pound foolish. So what does penny wise, pound foolish means? Oh, I have to save 18,000 rupees salary of a driver. I will drive. I know how to drive. Let me drive. So I drive from Delhi, Gurgaon to Noida for two and a half, three hours. But I can do how much work in those two and a half, three hours? 
I have 288 WhatsApp groups of my office. I can check all of them at 12 hours. So you should take the right decision. Saving those 18,000 rupees of a driver is not bootstrapping. That is being dumb. So you should know where you have to save the money, where you have to use the money. What will increase your productivity? So having a driver increases my productivity. So what will increase your effectiveness? What will increase your profitability? How the cost will go down? How the sales will go up? So please be very conscious with your money. Don't go and invest in a fancy office day one. Don't do any fancy things which a big corporate does because you have to build the baby. You have to raise the baby. So you can't expect the baby to be in college in the third month. So in the third month, he will still be at home. Uh, then he will go to the nursery or a play school. Then he will go to KG. Then he will finish his schooling. So please give enough time for the baby to grow step, step by step and not do foolish things by sending your baby to the college and then the baby will not be able to perform in the college. So take care of your baby well. So, and then of course, uh, we have, you know, being an entrepreneur, we should have, legal knowledge we should have financial literacy so don't think if you have done a like i have done an MB, my mb in marketing and international business so that is enough for me so how can i run a business then my staff will take me for a ride because then the staff will say Ari, yes, see you there. hr will say yes see you there. finance manager will say yes see you there. hr so every department will start standing on my head so that is not correct if you are an entrepreneur you should have basic knowledge of all business functions so you know and now uh thanks you know the times are changing that now the entrepreneurial courses which are available and which i'm sure jibs is also providing and a lot of institutes are providing they give you overall experience and knowledge of all business functions your specialization is not in one department when you in the entrepreneurial courses what i have seen recently of course not all of them do that some courses are not so good and some courses are very good in fact abroad also there are many courses in india also there are many courses so so the teachers and the faculties when they're designing their course i always suggest them sometimes i sit with them to do so i i have partnered with one of the uh, institutions where i design the course material for them so i always tell those faculty members that do not let the kids or the children specialize in one department we need to give them a 360 degree holistic understanding of all departments because they have to handle all these things in the beginning because of bootstrapping on their own and then once they have the budgets they will hire people but then they should know how to handle these people how these people will report the person will not be respecting you or reporting to you if you if he thinks you don't know enough so uh, you know it is very important to have all this knowledge and now like in my time there was no legal literacy taught to us but now we've added a chapter and i'm sure you know there are many things available online also so know the legal literacy and regulatory requirements of your particular industry so I should know what are the licenses I need for a food and beverage brand. If suppose somebody has a manufacturing unit, he should know what are the legal requirements for him to set up the business. So you should not land that you should are paying fines and you're doing something illegal. You should have social responsibility. You should be a part of a good ecosystem. You should have not do anything wrong as, you know, as per the legal requirements. So please have correct legal literacy of your industry wherever you are planning to be an entrepreneur or whatever is your business model. Apart from academic knowledge, and as I said, that designing courses, now you guys are very lucky that soft skills like public speaking, leadership, conflict management, time management, communication skills are being taught to be successful entrepreneurs because you cannot be an introvert and sit one in an office and market your brand also you need the correct communication skills the correct leadership skills because you have to lead a team earlier when you were doing a job you were just handling your one area but when you are an entrepreneur you are handling all areas so you need to be definitely a good leader 
a leadership skill is a must is a must for you to become a successful entrepreneur so please whatever courses you are doing ensure that soft skills are being taught or if they are not taught please take courses or lessons now a lot of online material is available as well to enhance your soft skills because they are extremely extremely important to be successful to be a successful entrepreneur okay so these are uh, you know uh, three p's of my success which is passion so whatever i do i do with a lot of passion if i'm a mother i'm a very passionate mother if i'm an employer i'm a very passionate employer if i'm a wife i'm a very passionate wife so whatever you do in your life my suggestion is do it with passion mazaiga then you feel to do it i i have set up my business which is a part of my passion so every day i get up all excited oh today i have to do this are you here so because it's your passion second thing is patience the special gen z these days they don't have patience seek sab kuch lenge courses sare kar lenge but then patience please go and buy somewhere from from the market see things don't happen like this oh aaj maine vision banayi hai kal puri ho jayegi it's not going to happen like that. please be patient it has happened for nobody and okay maybe it has happened for some big names in the industry but trust me if, if you study their background they have struggled and they have hustled to become whatsoever or whomsoever they are today so don't think that oh i decided this it's not happening my way okay i'm giving up please please do not give up please have patience i'm using the word peace and please three piece ke alawa fourth piece please have patience buy patience create patience borrow patience i don't know but have patience please because without patience you can't achieve anything in life especially if you are an entrepreneur you will take very long like it takes very long for your baby to grow up your business takes long to grow up perseverance perseverance is you know very extremely important that don't give up perseverance means that if you are not able to if that road is closed remember you have to find another route to reach your office but don't just stand there or take a u turn and go back home so in for perseverance i usually say it's a very famous quote jeet aksar un logo ki hoti hai jo haar ko talte rehte hain so please delay failure don't accept failure don't compromise on failure failure will come mistakes will happen hurdles will come something what you've decided may not work something what you've decided may work less that's okay be flexible be adaptive change your route change your path let the vision be same let maybe pivot your business model change few things change your strategies have patience have leadership and you will eventually get there you will eventually get there so be adaptive to change but don't give up delay your failure don't accept it so thank you so much and in the end i would like to say one thing to all of you that here we are talking about tips to be a successful entrepreneur so we all have some skill we all have some qualities we all have some talents we all have some passion sometimes we are aware of it and sometimes we are not aware of it so my suggestion to you all a personal suggestion this is my personal quote i haven't taken it from anyone that we all have a spark we all have a passion find out what you're good at find out what is your skill give your 100% shot not 50 100% shot be adaptive have a clear vision give your best shot and achieve that vision don't think usne kya kaha aur isne kya kaha wo kya kehta hai ki ye kya kehta hai just follow god has a path for you but you have to walk on the path on your own so it's a, it's a quote what i usually use as i said this is a quote by myself that we all have a spark within ourselves we all have a skill within ourselves please find that spark light it up and brighten the world around you thank you that's really amazing quote i would i must say this ma'am and thank you once again for sharing and enlightening all of us 
uh, when it comes to the entrepreneurship. And I'm, I'm sure the way you've put it across, in a very simple of the simplest possible way you have put it across for all the audience i'm sure they have jotted down the points for themselves to how to take it ahead as you rightly mentioned uh, along with three p's the fourth p is also equally important that they have to do it that's a please has to also be added that that was really amazing and uh, further moving i i mean we have a lot of questions uh, which we have received at this point of time so we'll take up quickly we'll take a few of the questions among them because we are running short of time so we'll quickly take a few of the questions among these uh, bhavna is asking uh, madam how difficult it is for the women to start any business i'm thinking from last 3 years due to responsibilities i am unable to do it so hi bhavna it's a very sweet question and but the answer is within you if you decide you have to do it then you will do it so it's so one day you have to jump if you keep standing on the cliff and just keep thinking that oh i will fall i will fall i will fall then you will not be able to jump or do that sky dive or whatsoever so i think take help from your husband this is the personal suggestion that he will be able to both of you sit down together uh this is not a answer from the book this is just my personal suggestion that uh, sit down together make a plan that uh, if you have kids who will manage kids as i said uh be, don't be penny wise pound foolish so hire a maid uh it's not i am not guilty that if my maid takes care of my son my my son still learns a lot from me my son respects that to get something you have to work you know how much he respects that you know people have to work and work gives us achievement work gives us food work gives us clothes that he respects me uh, and i never feel guilty that my maid has you know taking care of my son every day so i don't know if you have kids or not uh, but please sit with your husband or sit with your father if you are unmarried and make out a plan first find the problem कि आपको किस चीज का बिजनेस करना है सिर्फ ये सोच के कि मुझे बिजनेस करना है अगेन दैट इज नॉट इनफ फाइंड योर पैशन फाइंड योर इंटरेस्ट फाइंड योर एबिलिटी फाइंड व्हाट इज द प्रॉब्लम इन दैट इंडस्ट्री एंड देन फाइंड द सॉल्यूशन वंस यू हैव अ सॉल्यूशन यू विल बी एबल टू लॉन्च इट एब्सोल्युटली थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दैट मैम लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दिस इज बीन आस्क्ड बाय यश नरेंद्र ही सेज गुड इवनिंग मैम you have mentioned about employee esops i see two challenges in my organization how should i give give up to the employees and how much of their pay should be in esops what if employees are not interested to take that part of the company and are interested only in the paychecks okay yash this is a question that i also face this so how much esops shall i give what is the correct amount of esops so what usually the industry trend is not Uh, what in the F and B industry, ten percent is what ESOP should be allocated. And in fact, a lot of industries the allocation percentage as per the the book is ten percent. So when you allocate ten percent, and then based on a certain you know based on your company's valuation, you decide that how many shares you want to issue. So the thumb rule usually lies that whatever is their monthly salary, you can do into three. and that many number of shares so suppose your company's valuation is uh, so, so my company's valuation is 50 crores so then 50 crores then 10% what is the value of one share once you get the value of one share what is the salary of that employee then multiply into 3 then those many number of shares should be issued this is what the rule or the thumb rule says so this is how you will calculate that how many esops have to be issued to that particular employees now what happens is sometimes people don't respect and appreciate is of because they they do not know after 3 years or 5 years what will happen so educate them like i sent uh, videos to my staff uh, how reliance employees became lakpati because of esops so educate them share some information share some videos uh, in hindi or english whatever your target employees are and tell educate them that you know esops are the next way of becoming overnight rich once the company valuation reaches that stage and uh, so this is your question one and the question two is as i said educate them and if they are still not interested to be part of the esops then then probably 
you know if you educate them i think they will respect that if they don't respect that then that means that target audience is not for e shops then you will have to give them money to motivate them great and thank you so much for that i'm sure this will help uh, them to understand much better we will take a last couple of questions ma'am uh, first of all uh, priyam saying one of our student being an alumni of gibs uh, have some free time it's an awesome session ma'am your uh, session is a truly uh, refresher course for my entrepreneurial journey uh, you truly took to my pgp iire days my question is with failures how to overcome it when we have lot of risk for the entrepreneurial venture so uh, the balance of risk is uh, risk is in every business risk is in every you know risk okay i'll ask you a question priyam i don't know if you can answer if you are in a job you know uh, suddenly overnight people have lost their job when there is a problem suddenly in the morning people go to the office and they say okay from tomorrow onwards please don't come so risk is everywhere so but the good part is that if you are in your own business and there is a risk or there is a failure as i said don't give up there is no business where there is no failure there is no business where there is no failure so there is failure everywhere but the most important thing is learn from those failures because as rightly said either it is winning or it is learning so don't use the word failure when you have failed that means you've learned something so learn from it fix it so that that thing you don't repeat it in the future that will reduce the future risk so it's very important to learn from other people's failure very important to learn uh, from other people's mistakes it's very important to learn from your own failure it's very important to understand that failure is not failure it's just learning so that you can avoid it in your future so failures will happen there is there is nobody on this planet who does not face failure you tell me one person i am sitting here and understanding even even um, you know the biggest of tatas and bitlas and whosoever they also have failed no other failure for example okay so there are there are there are things some cold drink comes big coke brand they launch a product that becomes a failure so every business venture will have few failures every business model will have few failures but that does not mean that you can't reach your vision you need to learn and not call them failures call them learnings and fix it for the future great thank you so much for that ma'am i'm sure there's nothing called as failures it's always either you win or you learn so there's nothing called as failures so let's let's not take this word again where we say we failed it whether we can say we learned it right yes. probably a little harder way that's all so it can always be redo again so Absolutely. thank you so much for that ma'am let's take a one last question for this evening uh, this has been asked by tanveer singh gandhi uh, should there be any minimum or optimal qualification uh, before we start the business so tanveer uh, good good evening tanveer uh, you don't need a qualification or a minimum you know educational degree to become an entrepreneur but as i rightly said before you plunge into the business please take care of those things that you have knowledge about your industry you have knowledge about your competition you have knowledge about your target audience you have knowledge about so whatever my 18 slides are just know those things you should have a business plan in hand you should have a uh, legal literacy so it's not necessary to do a course or an academic certificate to start a business you can have all these requirements fulfilled using online material attending sessions like this so then you will have literacy for your industry so all those 18 slides what i've shared with you are extremely important before you start a business so that, so if you are able to do that you don't need any as your question is you don't need any minimum qualification you can start your journey today and i wish you all the best uh, i'm i'm sure uh, tanvir in case if you have missed any of these slides any which way the, this video would be there on the gibs youtube channel you can go back refer those slides understand and then start your groundwork right so that you do not miss out on anything start the way ma'am have explained it's amazingly well where point by point they have explained it in such a nice way so that you can just go through review those things understand those things and then start your journey 
we wish to see you uh, fl flourishing your business and coming back to IRE and thanking ma'am or probably GIGs that yes, something has started or we have rooted your seeds right from here. Right, thank you so much. Uh, ma'am, thank you so much. I, I would love to extend my gratitude uh, to you from the entire team of GIGs for being with us and sharing your uh, amazing thoughts and enlightening all of us uh, in a such simplest uh, form possible, which I learned a lot of things which I understood. And just for participants, I would say ma'am was mentioning about her brands. I would say it's uh, mad over parathas and pakoras. The, the, the moment when you told about you have built the same brands in the same cloud kitchen, the melee which you have started and mad over curries which you have started. I think there's one more I'm not very specific sure about the name. Biryani in a bowl. Uh, so we've changed the name. We, we launched it uh, two weeks ago. It's called Yum Biryani Bowls. Yes, Yum Biryani Bowls. Okay, great. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a true follower. I, I'll tell you the four brands. One is Mad Over Parathas and Pakodas. The other is Meali, M-E-A-L-Y, which serves your daily meals. The third is Sassy Indian. And uh, so, we, uh, so we've changed. So it's an example, Mad Over Curry. The name had certain issues. So we, I, so I did not think I failed in it. I changed the name. <laughs> so I changed the strategy. It's called Sassy Indian now, and the fourth brand is called Yum Biryani Bowls, which is which we've recently launched. Again, the whole idea is to serve single meals and upgrading the street foods uh, to an hygienic mid-segment delivery audience. Great! So, Thank you so much for that. I'm so Thank sorry. you so much for giving me an opportunity. I'm so glad that I got this opportunity and I always feel very happy when I'm able to motivate and, you know, some young minds to go and become entrepreneurs. So I'm happy that you will become successful entrepreneurs. I wish you all the very best. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much for your valuable insights and all of us. And I'm, I'm sure all the brands... Uh, um, I have one small question and before I wind up. Just want to understand on which all part of India are we catering to at this point of time? So right now we have 20 online listings, but they're all in Delhi NCR. We are in Delhi, we are in Gurgaon, we are in Noida, and we're opening up in Faridabad next month. Wow, that's, and that's we'll be coming to Bangalore soon, don't worry. Looking forward, I'm eagerly waiting for that. And, and and I heard about one of the amazing product which you made us Maggi Pakoda, which which I was eagerly waiting to have. But any day I'm there, any anyway, second I'm there in Delhi. So I'll, I'll make sure that when I'm even in my hotel, I'll surely get it done. I will send it across to you. And yes, so for, uh, you know, our uh, mad over parathas and pakodas is very popular for serving gourmet parathas and crispy fusion Thank pakodas. You which do not get soggy and which are not oily and are delivery friendly. Great, great. I would love to try them, ma'am. Certainly, yes. But the moment I, I reach Delhi, I'll surely uh, buzz you once on that. Thank you so much once again. And uh, once again, a heartfelt gratitude to you, ma'am, for joining Thanks. us. And it was Thank really you. wonderful having you with us on the special occasions of Women Entrepreneurs uh, Month, which we are uh, celebrating now. And I would also like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all the participants. You have been really amazing, very, very active and supportive in understanding the concepts of the uh, IRE talks. One last announcement we have to make. The next IRE is on 16th of November. That is being done by Ms. Justine Kaur, CEO and co-founder of Branding Evils. So this is basically the topic of entrepreneurship 2.0, cultivating an entrepreneurial ecosystem in a hyper-connected age. So looking forward to see you once again on 16th of November, 4.30 p.m. at the same time. And the certificates for all the participants will be shared in next two working days. You can follow uh, Gitika Ma'am. She's available on most of the platforms. I think she has already shared the Insta handle, the LinkedIn, the email IDs already was there in the uh, this particular webinar. You can just log in. And I'm sure you don't have to search for it. You just put the name. I'm sure you will get her Insta handle. So looking forward to uh, kind of stay connected and please do take care of yourself, ma'am, you also and your family also. I wish a very, Thank very you. healthy time ahead. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for joining us once again. Thank you so much. Have a blessed evening. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you.